I've digitized some features on Heron Reef and now it's time for me to actually create a map out of the data that I have so I can really communicate that information. So what I'm going to do is go up here to project and go down to new print layout and you can give it a name if you like but I'm just going to let it default to whatever it feels like calling it there. So basically this is like a blank canvas and what we're going to do is to populate that with various elements of the map. Now you can see all these different elements down on the left hand side or you could also access them through that add item button on the upper toolbar there. So the first thing I'm going to do is to add my actual data. So I'm going to click on that on the left hand side and draw out a nice big box to represent the area where I want it to cover. Now that's automatically going to bring in the extent of the view that I already had in my previous interface, which is great. Now other types of things that I might want to add, if I come down here on the left hand side, that will let me add a legend. So I'm going to draw out a box and it doesn't, it doesn't really matter too much where you place it, it's just getting the information on the page to start with. Now this defaults to add a lot of information that I don't necessarily want. For example, it's got some point feature classes there that aren't actually depicted in my map here. So I'm going to need to make some adjustments to my legend item. So over on the right hand side, I'm going to click on legend and come into the item properties. And I'm going to scroll down the bottom here and you'll see the information about the legend. And the first thing I'm going to do to tidy this up a little bit is to filter it by what's actually in the display there. So if I click on that, you'll see that the legend changes substantially and has reduced quite a bit. There's also something there that I don't really want, which is just the Google satellite notation there. So what I'm going to do just to get rid of the remaining features there is to turn off auto update and that's going to allow me to make minor modifications. So I'm going to find the Google satellite just there and now click on the minus button and that's going to remove it from my legend. Now the other thing that I want to do is it's a little bit messy to look at the legend item which says heron underscore habitat. And that's fine for a file name, but it just doesn't look that good in the legend. So I'm going to tap on that there and click down on this little pencil. And that's going to allow me to remove it or to retype a different name. I don't feel like I need it there at all. So I'm actually going to delete it. And then I can just hit OK. And you'll see that's removed. And I now have my legend item. Now the next thing I'd like to do is add in my scale bar. So I'm going to click on that and draw out a length of scale bar here. Now again I want to make some changes to that so I'm going to tap on the scale bar on the upper right hand side, come down to the properties and I'd like to give it five segments along. Now I'm happy with it being in meters, this is a really small part of the reef so in general I'm pretty happy with that and I'll look about placement of that one soon. I would like to add a title to my map. So if I find the, the T, it's going to allow me to add text. So I draw out a box up here and come over to the right hand side in the properties and I can type the name of my map. I can now change the font size there by just tapping on that and increasing that to something that's a little bit more appropriate for a title. So once I have that in there and I'm happy with the size, I'm just going to tap off that. Now in the same way, I'm going to add some annotation down the bottom here, which is going to give some information to the viewer about what they actually see in the map and the source of the data. So this is always really important information there. So I can add that information in there. Now the other thing I'd like to see is an inset map, which is going to help the person who's looking at this map understand exactly the context of what they're seeing. So what I'm going to do to start with is just to lock my map one because I'm quite happy with that the way it is. And then I'm going to come back over to my main QGIS interface. I'm going to create a new view, which is going to allow me to set up that context of the area where we're working. So if I go up to view and tap on new map view, you'll see that I get this little window pop up here and that shows me that same image that we've already popped over into the map layout. Now when I come back to my main image here, I'm going to zoom this out to an extent that makes it a little bit clearer 
in terms of context of where that location is that we've been working. So just by bringing that extra information there, it just gives the viewer or the, the person who's analysing your map just a little bit more information as to what's around there. Now, if I head back over to that print layout here, I can now add in a second map. So I click on the new map to the layout and draw out a little box around about here. And this time that's going to use my map two, which was the main frame to, to populate that there. So it's giving us a little bit of context, but how about we add, add something that's just gonna help that out a little bit. So make it a little bit clearer for people to see exactly where it is that we've taken this zoomed in area from. So if we come down, scroll down here on the right hand side, we can tap on this overviews. And if I click the plus button, that's going to give me overview one. And what I want to do is to say that I want an overview of map one. And as I do that, you should see that we get this little square come up in red. I'm going to actually just change that color to make it a little bit more obvious. And that helps us see exactly where our zoomed in area is. Now, the only other thing that I'd like to do is just to add a frame to each of my map views. I just think that helps to tidy it up a little bit there. So let's pop that on, on map number one as well. We can scroll down and tap in the frame. Now, the final element that I'm going to add is the north arrow. So if I come over here to that arrow and I'm going to use the shift key to make sure that the line I draw is straight. So I click it to finish. I click it on the right hand mouse button to close that feature and you'll see that I have my little arrow there. And then of course I can add a letter N up the top to finish that off. So there you go, you've got the basic elements there and the final part of it is really to use your own creativity to make sure that the map looks balanced and is easy for, the, for your viewer to understand. So hopefully when you put that all together, you'll end up with something that looks a little more like this.